Happy Halloween! <laughs>Okay, guys welcome back to the channel basswood carving we're gonna this is part two of our video on the graveyard scene so we're gonna uh see what we can get done today in this video we got the little ghost that we're gonna do and we got the little mummy and then we might get started on uh the witch's broom and um, then we'll do the witch and uh, cauldron in another video Probably we'll see what happens. We'll see how quick we get these done. I'm trying to keep them as short as possible um, But here we go. Uh, so with the uh, mummy You can just see it's just a little simple mummy here um, We're gonna take and come down a little bit and I'm just using these little blocks um, Scrap wood. I'll put the measurements on the screen and in and, and the sheet on the website basswoodcarving.com um, but basically it's just a little scrap wood. It's about three inches tall, um, roughly about, uh, an inch wide for the mummy and, um, about an inch thick. So it's a little, almost square. I guess it's probably about three quarters of an inch thick, but these are just scraps. Like I said in the earlier video, they're just scraps that I found in my scrap box and, uh, pulled these out and challenged myself to make some things out of them. Um, so here's what we're going to do today. We're going to do the mummy and uh, We're going to come down a little bit and probably about Less than an inch maybe three quarters of an inch. So we just want to get that Little bit of the head started for the mummy Use your use your finger get you a line all the way around It's roughly the same I'm using my flex all knife for this one and we're going to round this off to a head and then we're just going to basically curve this down and then we're going to put the uh, mummy wrap on there so um, start off with a stop cut right here separate the head just to give you a marking come all the way around all four spots Make a stop cut on all four corners. Okay, and then we're going to just take all the rough edges off. I like to take off the rough edges right away because that makes it a little more comfortable holding on to. Holding on to your piece. After a while, you keep holding on to those hard edges. It starts to starts to give you a little pain in your hand. That's if you got a big old block and you're working on. But I just take these sharp edges off, these pointed edges. Unless I'm doing a nose or something like that where I'm using that edge, I'll usually go ahead and just take that take that off right away make it a little more comfortable in my hand while I'm holding on to it okay then we're gonna start rounding this off just coming back the other way with the V make it a V cut and um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet please subscribe Leave me some comments. Let me know how I'm doing. I need a little uh, constructive criticism on my videos just to know if I'm doing okay or if I'm something I need to fix. I'm really struggling with the uh, the lighting. I don't want it to be too washed out, but yet I need lighting, some good lighting. So, you know, that's kind of a challenge to me. Um, I bought some LEDs and uh, they're kind of bright. I'm working with the adjustments on them to try to get that that brightness correct. Um, but you know, I'm I'm all for constructive criticism. Please, please leave a comment. 
let me know how I'm doing. As long as it's positive, not a hateful comment, I can deal with a little constructive criticism for sure. Again, I'm just a beginner. I've only been carving about two years, so by no way, no means am I an expert. But I hope I can inspire you to pick up a knife and a piece of basswood and carve something. You know, try to carve every day. I try to carve something every day. I'll spend an hour, maybe two hours carving. Sometimes when I'm watching TV, I'll sit in my relaxing chair and carve something even if I'm just working on a project I'll try to work on it a little bit every day um, and you know how us carvers are we're always working on more than one thing it's just crazy I thought that was just me but I found out that most other carvers they usually have two or three things going on at once you know carving a couple different projects you just so if you're working on a big project, a big long project, a lot of times you just you just get bored with that project or you think of something else and you, you're like, oh man, I'd like to start carving on making this or making that. And, you know, I do cowboys. I like to carve the character cowboys and we'll do some of them from a rough out. And, uh, you know, there's so much detail work to do on them that sometimes I like to just do a quick, a quick little carve. I'm, I'm one of those. I like to watch YouTube videos and see quick little carves from other carvers and try to, try to do my little style to it. You know, I like to watch Doug a lot. Doug Linker, he's, he's one of my favorites. And uh, I'm sure if you guys watch carving videos, you've seen Doug. He's very creative and comes up with some really cool little projects. And I think I've just about carved every one of them. I usually, as soon as he puts up a new video, I'm usually getting a block of wood and carving along with him. So I'm hoping that my channel can be somewhat like that. Um, and that's kind of the challenge is to come up with creative new carvings that somebody else hasn't already done. You know, or putting my own little twist on it. Um, so, you know, that's kind of what I did with this little graveyard scene. Um, I don't like to, I don't like to waste wood. So, if I can create something out of my scraps, sometimes that's, that's a good challenge for you. If you're just learning how to carve, you know, pick up a piece of your scrap or uh, cut some little blocks. And, um, you know, take, take that block and look at it, look it over really good and just, you know, try to, try to figure out something you can carve out of it. Um, my teacher, he gave us a wedge of wood one time and he said, uh, I want you to, t everybody to take this block of wood home and, uh, think of what you can create out of it and carve something. And it was pretty cool to see all the different ideas that people came up with just from a, a wedge, a little wedge of wood. And uh, I carved a little Santa out of mine. And, uh, you know, it was, it was kind of fun. It was kind of a fun little challenge. So, you know, if you got a bunch of scrap laying around from where you've cut things out for rough outs or whatever, Save those and give yourself a challenge. Try to come up with something from that piece of wood. Um, another thing I did was uh, for one of my cowboy scenes, which I'll show you when I get them all painted. When I get the whole scene painted, you know, we'll uh, do something similar. But um, I needed a, I wanted to put a little rattlesnake on it. And um, I went out to my scrap box and found a piece of scrap and carved me a little rattlesnake out of it. So really challenge yourself when it comes to carving. 
I think that's one way you can really improve your carving is take on a challenge especially if you're a beginner because if you're working with scrap you don't really have it you haven't heard anything it's just a piece of wood that you were probably gonna throw out anyway but like I said save all your carving save all your pieces of wood and challenge yourself all right so we're basically we're just rounding this down a little bit we'll get it a little deeper okay we'll just get the get the top off trying to get it rounded to that head shape and um, carve this little boy mummy If there's any other carvers out there you know that are has come across my videos I'd like to know um, if you've got a channel please uh, please post it in the comments I don't care post it in the comments and so other people can find it I really like to promote the whole carving community because it's just it's just a lot of good people fun people and um, you can really learn a lot from other carvers. I'm always trying to learn new things, make myself better. Okay, so we're just gonna, got that kind of some, some, somewhat rounded down. We'll come back and mess with it a little bit. Okay, so. Now we're going to start bringing this down. I got it a little more narrow at the base. So basically we're just going to get that curved mummy look. Um, so start by taking this bottom down a little bit. Um, on any, on most of these, actually on all of these, I left the flat bottom on them, which will help in... Um, Letting it sit better on your base. Um, so if you haven't seen the first video, go back and watch the first video. It's where I explain how I put together the base. And um, your base is, that you can mount all your pieces on. And you've probably seen it at the beginning of the video. Um, pictures of the scene I got a fly flying around me I think I'm having a Mike Pence moment here <laughs> if you've seen the debates you've seen that fly land on his head it was kind of annoying it kept bugging me while I was watching it I was like oh, man I wish he'd get that fly off his head So just keep working this around, get you around somewhat of a little bit of a circumference here. Blend this all in. Just using pairing cuts, pairing cuts and push cuts. Working it down.
to get down enough to get that flat spot off of there. I like flat plane carving so if you're new to carving you probably don't really understand what flat plane carving is and it's an old Scandinavian style of carving and when you look at a wood carving that is flat plane usually you see almost every cut or so that was made um, and I think that's kind of cool it's the uniqueness of it that adds to it. So like you'll see all these little cuts and bumps in there. And that's really what makes flat plane carving what it is. It's, it's like we don't really go back and sand all of them smooth and try to take all the bumps out of them and everything. We like that, that look that shows that it's a wood carving and not like a manufactured piece. gives it that unique look whenever you're carving and you get a chunk like that you want to go back and flip it around and go the opposite direction something about just trimming off wood that's fun I don't know as I've said in some of my earlier videos I used to watch my grandpa when we go fishing and he always would like to make those little roosters out of twigs and if, if you don't know what that is you'll you'll see some wood carvers have done it I think Doug's done the little roosters he used to make the roosters all the time, which was kind of cool. Um, it was just something he loved to just sit there while he's fishing, because we do cat fishing. So it's not like you're standing there casting all the time. You're just kind of sitting there waiting for the big bite. And he would sit there and make and whittle little things out of the piece of stick that he would find laying on the fishing bank. And, uh, you know, I was fortunate enough to get his old-timer carving knife, pocket knife, really. He used it for everything. But, man, he kept that thing so sharp. He would sit there. He actually had a little sharpening stone in his uh, tackle box and... He would just sit there. If he wasn't whittling, he was sharpening that knife. And, man, I'll tell you what. That thing is, was sharp this day after he passed away. My grandmother asked me if there was anything that was his that I would like to have. And I said, really, I'd like to have his little pocket knife. So she gave it to me. And, um... That was my first actual wood carving knife that I started with when I kind of got into wood carving. Since I didn't have any tools or anything, I had uh, his little pocket knife. And I pulled that thing out and started whittling on a piece of pine. And man, that thing was sharp. It whipped right through that pine. So now I kind of don't even use it. 
I just kind of keep it for memory's sake. And uh, that's kind of what got me inspired into wood carving. All right. Okay, so we kind of got the shape a little bit. You know, like I said in the earlier video, you'll 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 probably do yours a little different if you create this project. You know, you, yours might look a little different, but that's cool. Every, I think everything that somebody carves and adds their own little flair to it is what makes carving fun and unique. And uh, you might carve a ghost or a mummy or something like that, and it might not look like somebody else's. And that's the fun of carving, really, is that there, there's really no mistakes. If you mess up, you can always say, yeah, I meant it to be that way. That's what I wanted. That's how I wanted it to look. These two mummies probably won't look the same either. But it's just the concept we're trying to put together for you. To teach you how to use your tools. Okay. So here we are. This one's actually a little taller. See? Which is fine. Um because my ghost is probably going to be as tall too on these two like I just said I just used some scraps scraps of wood that I had and that was the size that I had and that's what I came up with all right okay so we got him kind of rounded down um, we'll take his neck back in a little bit more just to give him a little bit more of a neckline here just keep making them stop cuts Deeper and deeper. Go in as far as you want. working with these small pieces it will really help improve your detail carving so if you do want to get into cowboy carving or doing real fine detail work you know working with these small pieces is really good practice because you're not really wasting a lot of wood and you're have to work slow little minute cuts when you're doing the detail work okay all right so Kind of got the body shape there. And this one, he don't, they don't have arms. My ghost, or my mummies, ghost or mummies on this project don't have arms. Because I really wanted to just do something quick. And we didn't, I didn't put any arms on them. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go over these little mummy wrappings here. And we're going to use, we use a V-tool. Or uh, do some of them cuts with a knife so you can see how to do them with a knife if you don't have a V-tool. Um, so we're going to start and draw them, draw them on there. And the first one we're just going to go around. And remember, don't make them perfect. It'll look better if they're not perfect. You know. And you can kind of just go around this whole thing and make it look like a wrap just by going around it. So you can just go around it. And I'll do this one a little wider just for the video purpose so you can see what we're doing. Make it a little easier. And just go around and draw these little pencil wrappings all the way around it. And once we get them all the way around, I'm 
I'll show you how to make them look like they're overlapping. We'll do the body first and then we'll do the head separate. We're just going to rough it in with the pencil for now. All right. Okay, so we're going to take our V tool and we use one of our flex cut V tools. And we're just going to start following that line a little bit. I'm going to kind of make it look like a wrap. Give it kind of a twisted look. Just going around, following our line. We're not even going very deep right now because we want to make sure we get all of our lines in there. And then we can come back if we want to make it a little deeper. We can make it a little deeper. A little more pronounced. There's a 
couple ways you can do it. If you want it to look completely wrapped, just keep going all the way around. Follow your line around. Or you can actually start in a different spot. And like I did with this one, and make them run into each other. Come this way and this way. And we'll, we'll kind of do that. When we cut it in. Just work around. Follow your lines. It's a good way to practice. Learn how to use your V-tool. knife. See, I'm going to use my lion's knife. This is made by lions. And it has a curved blade on it. Um, so I can come in here, follow around my line, come back in, Cut that out. Just like that. It's kind of hard to see, I'm sure, with this little piece. clean it up just take that little sliver out of there So, okay, for speed purposes, I'm going to use the V tool because I can go a little faster with the V tool. Okay. Alright, so we got pretty much all the way around on the body. Let's see, we got a little spot right here. So we basically just spiraled that line all the way around. And we got kind of different, it's not very uniform, which is fine. And so what we're going to do to make it look like a double wrap is we're just going to cut a little V cut right here. Like so. And we'll come back here and cut one. Let's go the opposite direction. This way. Okay, I hope you can see that, it's kind of 
but we're just gonna basically cut little notches in there it makes it look like that you started a new wrap when you did your mommy and we just do them in different spots so once you paint it It'll look fine. All right. So we got our mummy wrapped on the body. Now we're gonna come around here. Now at the top, I'm not going to. I'm gonna leave the top rounded, so that way it looks like his head sticking out of the top. You can see on this one. I kind of left it sticking out right there. And I didn't even really draw any lines. I just, after a little while, you'll get to be where you can just go around and put your details in. Without even using any lines, but I'll put lines on just to help you guys out. Just so you can get that twisted look gives you something to follow along with and you can also change direction so if your spiral is going up here go from the top down and give it a little different angle which kind of makes it look a little different And I can even draw my line here and touch into the other one that I wrote that I drew above it. And that also gives it more of a wrapped look. Okay. You'll probably spend way more time on yours than I am right now. I know I did on my first one just because I wanted it to look really good. I'm going a little fast on this one just because I want to get through as many pieces of the puzzle here as I can. But once you get yours going... Turn around, look at it different angles. Like I said, this was just a little quick element to put on there. Okay? And then we just painted the eyes on. We didn't do anything with the eyes. We just painted those on. And if you've got a spot that's a little wider, like right here, we got a little wider spot. You can do this. Go up to your previous. Cut it. 
and then go down to work your way down to your bottom line and I'm going to meet it right where I got that other little nick okay so it gives it that wrapped look alright so that's pretty much it for the mummy like I said take your time on yours spend some time on it get more detailed this is like my third one so I'm getting kinda wouldn't say bored with it but just I want to move on so I can get through all the other pieces in the video alright so there's our mummy there's our little mummy if you want to cut eyes in it you can cut eyes in it um, but we're not going to do that today alright so like I said this one's a little taller never looked the same alright All right, let's get started on the uh, ghost. We're gonna find a pencil, pen, pen here. So really, all we're gonna need to do on this ghost is just round this off right here, and then get a little indention in the shape right here, as you can see. Got a little swash in. We're just gonna round the top off, and then we'll come back and put in the curves and wrinkles all right so we just start off and i'll probably time lapse this so it'll kind of be fast and get right through it rounding this off just using push cuts first go all the way around get your get your corners off and uh like i said earlier i like to take these off kind of right away if i'm not going to use that corner for a nose or a face I like to go ahead and just take these corners off it just makes it com more comfortable when you're holding it in your hand you don't have any sharp edges digging in so since we're doing pretty much a round piece here we can take these off pretty good but we'll start at the top of the head just because that's always the most extensive part now if you got a scroll saw or a band saw you can always kind of pre-round that off a little bit just taking stick it in your scroll saw or your band saw and cut that top down just a little bit it'll kind of speed up it's kind of the purpose of rough outs is that you just you're not really cutting away for an hour on just unwanted material so the rough outs give you a, a pre-cut piece and you're just going back and putting the details in. So for this part I'm going to go ahead and speed it up, get down to the down to the rounded head and then we'll come back on.
Okay. All right, so you can see here, I rounded the top. What I did was I started halfway down and I started taking that up more right there. And uh, that way I can start getting my shape from my bottom and I can always keep taking this down a little bit too. So the way I want to get that little indention in there just to give it a little different, uh, little different shape is by swooping my blade in and back up. I was just kind of doing that so you can kind of see the motion, but you're kind of just twisting your blade up, going down in and twisting up, kind of really exaggerating it, but that's why I just wanted to, wanted to see the technique. Um, so we'll just, and like I said, whenever you hit a bad spot like that where it wants to fray on you, just turn your wood the opposite direction, all right? So we're gonna, um, work our way around that. I want the head to be just a little fatter where the body comes in and then the um, the sheet drapes out at the bottom. And, and that's gonna give me, a, give me a place to put the wrinkles in. Also, um, I wanna, I'm, I'm gonna keep taking this down because I still have to round out these flat edges right here. So this is gonna get smaller, which means I gotta keep taking this smaller, all right? I know this like seems like a very simple project for a lot of uh, experienced carvers that might be watching, but I mean this this is geared towards something that somebody can create pretty easy without a, a lot of knowledge of carving. Okay, because uh, like when I started carving, I needed those simple little projects just so I could learn how to just round a piece out. And you'll notice that I do a lot of little short little shortcuts um i don't you know when i'm kind of shaping my carving because i like all those little flat spots it leaves in there that's that's the beauty of flat plane carving i think anyway in my opinion but um so i do a lot of little short cuts in and out and that gives it that ruffled look of the flat plane carving um you know unless i'm wanting something to look really smooth then you know I'll take I'll take my time I'll take long strokes off and just go back and smooth all the little rough spots out. But um, when you're when you're just learning to carve these these little flat plane easy carving techniques really just help you help you develop your your skills with your knife. Okay, all right. So I'm no, I'm gonna time lapse this up again and then I'm going to go ahead and finish this out and get this get this rounded and take this down a little more and I'm going to keep on keep that little indentions in there I want my head to be just a little bigger than the body part give it a little more shape okay so let me chip away and, uh, and then I'll bring it right back
Okay, so I almost got the size size of my head that I want. Um, so what a way I can make this a little faster because I just wanted to kind of show you, you know, how you can do it, you know, slowly and get a little bit of curvature that you want. But say I want to take in a bunch, what I'm going to do is just put in a good stop cut. This piece of wood that I'm working with is a scrap. And it's hard, pretty hard. So I can start putting some st stop cuts in all the way around. Some V cuts. If I really want to pronounce that and make it stand out, I'll go in here first and go around. I could also have done this from a square block start right off on the square block too um but like i said this is you know this is kind of a beginner video so practicing my knife skills my knife handling is one of the skills that we want to learn as a beginner but basically i can take this all the way around Not a lot of detail in this, so it's kind of kind of easy technique. I will really take this one in good, so you can really see the difference. Really, we're just going to separate the head a little bit all the way around. Okay, now I'll just join these two together with some bigger cuts. Kind of like we did on the mummy. Since it's supposed to represent a sheet, a sheet most of the time, if, say like your kid's costume, is just going to hang over their shoulders. So I guess when you think about a ghost, you don't think about a hard neckline. That's why you kind of want to make this blend all the way.
Hey, it's your own carving. Do what you want with it. Like I said, I'm sure, you know, people are going to maybe come up even with some better ideas, and that's fine. As long as I can inspire you to carve something or give you an idea to create something on your own, you don't have to use my idea. Just make something. Just carve something. Okay, so see how we're kind of getting that back to where it was. With a little more indention, leaving the head a little bigger. And just gradually work this down. I leave it flared out at the bottom. I got all the dogs here today, so hear some barking going on it's them three got three shepherds in them and a little chihuahua and they like to bark a lot if they see a bird a squirrel something outside they gotta give it hell Like I said, this is my third one here, so I can guarantee you all three of my ghosts didn't look the same, because I really didn't want them to look the same. I was giving them three to give, this will be the third one that's going to a third person, so I didn't really want each one to be exactly the same, and that's kind of why, you know... making them kind of look a little different. I think with carving, even when you're an experienced carver and you create something, and you then if you was to try to duplicate that, you would probably, probably try to just do something a little different each time. At least I think, you know, that's how most carvers think. If you were giving something to somebody, you wouldn't. I mean, now, unless you're, you know, you're mass producing these things to sell at a flea market or a church bazaar or something like that. That's understandable if you're trying to make them all look the same. But, you know, the thing about carving is, is you know, it's each piece is really unique because the person's taking their time to handcraft that piece. And make it unique. Okay. All right. So that's that's kind of good for the ghost and the head. I think. I think probably before I'm done with it, I won't be done with it. If you know what I mean. So let's put some. Let's put some. Uh, some grooves in here basically you know figure out where your front's going to be let's say we're going to do this right here do a little eyes right here i'll just put these on just to represent the face so i know where the front is all right, so my first wrinkle I'm gonna put is right down the middle. All right, stop cut. Peel it out. And I'm doing this as you might only have just a knife and not any tools on this one. And then I'll show you. Cool. 
and then don't make your wrinkles all the same either. You know, put them, put them in a different spot. Make them little, some bigger, some smaller. Some more exaggerated than others. The reason I put the one in the middle was just because that would kind of almost represent where his feet is going to be if it's hanging over. And then pretty much the rest can just be random. Okay. Another way I can create the wrinkle is, of course, with my V tool. So I can just do some little texture wrinkles just by sliding my V tool in. And out and putting a few at the bottoms You can start high and go deep to the end. Start on the top and then go deep down to the bottoms. And then up here you can go in and come out. Okay. So play around with it, get what you like, and um, we're going to paint all these up, probably in a separate video, and I think now we'll do the witch's broom next. Alright, so clean it up, get it, get it how you like it. amount of wrinkles you want in there okay and let's do looks a little lopsided on the head there see even when I'm done I'm not done a little better all right so we're going to get a piece of wood and then we're going to do the little witch's broom now i'll probably do this one a little longer because on my last one i did i thought i used this piece of wood and it wasn't quite long enough i wanted it to be a little longer for the size of the witch okay and we're going to do the witch but i wanted the broom to be almost up to her shoulder so I'm going to see if I can find a bigger piece of scrap and um, and I'll bring you right back and we'll get started on the witch's broom. Okay, ran out to the garage real quick, found another piece that I think I can work with. Um, I'll show you that in just a second here. Let's get some of this out of the way. I said I had the broom here and I'd like to make the broom a little bigger because it came out a little short 
which I just used a little scrap of wood that I had, and I thought, well, I'll see if I can carve a broom out of that. Um, so I went out to the garage and found a perfect piece, nice little scrap. It would be perfect for what I want to do, and I can make it a little longer. So, you know, it, throughout the videos that I've been talking about is really I'm just using scrap stuff to create this. I'm just little pieces of, of scrap that you know, is right there and uh, that I can, you know, carve something out of. It's a big challenge sometimes just pick up a piece of wood and say, what can I make out of this? You know, I think that helps build your creative skills when you can do something like that. Um, so, and really the only thing is I used the bats for the pattern just because I wanted to show you how to do a transfer, um, you know, so... Um, really none of this was created with any kind of patterns or anything. It's just off the cuff, you know, take a piece of scrap wood and, and make something out of it, you know. Um, so just real quick, I'm going to strop. And just remember when stropping, don't press down too hard. Hold that blade at the perfect angle just so your edge is touching. Because I've been using this knife in the last three, four carvings and haven't stropped it lately. So important to keep a nice sharp knife. You know, that will definitely help with the safety. You know, with the safety of, of not getting cut because a sharp knife is always a safer knife. make a strop there's a bunch of videos out there on how to make a strop you can buy them on amazon uh, if you buy flex cut tools sometimes you get the, the little small uh, strop with it that works pretty good too with your v tools and your gouges and stuff um, you can just get a piece of leather like i did just get a piece of leather and a strip of basswood and glue that baby on there and you got a strop. It takes a few minutes. Okay, so we got our knife all stropped. Um, got us a little scrap here. Before I go further, I wanted to tell you that um, some people that's new to carving might not know what a rough out is, where I get all my scrap. Um, but I have a bandsaw, so I cut my own rough outs and um, I'll probably do a video on rough outs I think that's going to be my next video on where you can get rough outs and what how to do them and all that so um, but yeah these just come from just pieces that scrap that I used when I cut my cut my rough outs and I throw them in a garbage can and then when I need a little piece um, like the one cowboy I'm doing I'm cutting a, uh, carving a little rifle for him to hold so you know these pieces that i save work out great and um you know if uh if uh i need to come up with something like the broom for instance you know i was like i want to do a witch's broom on there so you know what can i do to create a witch's broom so i went out and grabbed a little scrap of wood and it was actually a square piece so i did a lot of carving to get down to this but um no i went out and actually i came across this wooden wedge piece and I thought well that looks good that that should work um because I wanted like I said I wanted to make it a little longer and I think I can cut it all the way back up to about right here and still have enough wood to make it round um and kind of crooked so um let's get started on that uh, first thing I'm going to do is since I know kind of where I want my top to be I'm going to mark it off right here just so I know I can cut it off right there um so this works out perfect. I got a fat enough piece at, my, at the bottom for my broom head. And um, I can start right here and make her, make her to length. Probably should have just fired up the bandsaw and cut that bad boy off right there. But hey, you know, you might not have a bandsaw or a scroll saw to do it. You, whatever, you know, whatever you want to create. You can do it with just a knife if you want to do all that cutting. But yeah, I'll do a 
talk about rough outs, where we can, where you, where are some good places to get rough outs and what's available and how you can really make your own if you get a scroll saw or a, or a band saw. Um, they even sell some small bench, bench top band saws um, that work out really good if you're just cutting small pieces. And then on the scroll saws, I'll tell you, they, they, they get up there in cost. You know, if you want to get a really good one, they're going to cost you some money. Mine is just a, kind of a cheapo from Harbor Freight. So, but it works out pretty good for what I, what I like to do. Small three to four inches, I think the maximum I can do is like four inches. Or th maybe it's three, three inch tall, under three. But that's where I get all my scraps. Um, so, all right, so I want to figure out where about where my broom's going to be. So I'm going to probably go about right here, which is probably a little bit under an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch or so. And I'll just go all the way around. Using the carver marking technique. This is how we this is how we keep something equal or close to equal. Use your fingertip, touch the wood, put it down, hold it against your finger, and just go around your piece, touching the bottom edge, making sure it don't move. Tilt it just a little bit. Okay. And then we'll just find the center here real quick. It's about right here. And this is going to be kind of crooked, a crooked broom, so I don't really have to worry about it being a straight line. All right, just enough to give me what I'm looking for here. Um, and then I'll come up just a little bit from that line to about right there so I can put my little uh, broom string in there where they tie it together onto the stick. Oh, kind of an old school, old school straw broom. But yeah, if if you're not into carving, get into carving. It's it's just a world of fun. I'll be starting up a Facebook page too, so look for me on Facebook. It's uh, it'll be basswood carving on Facebook, and you can always visit my website because I try to put up all the videos with detailed and kind of detailed information on the website, so that way. You know, if I have to put down dimensions and things like that, you got a place you can go. And um, maybe if I haven't done a video yet, you can go there and see what's coming up next because it's usually the first thing I try to do after I get the project figured out is get some pictures of my carving and get it on the website. So you can see what's coming up. Also, please subscribe if you if you want to keep following my videos. Please subscribe because that helps helps get the algorithm out there and gets people noticing the videos, so I can share the community, the carving community, with everybody. It's just a bunch of great people. I, I got a lot of good friends in my life and that don't carve don't kind of understand what it's all about but I've really gained a lot of buddies male and female in carving you know it's it's kind of cool I'd like to see more younger people get involved in carving give them things to do Just wish, you know, kind of wished I would have got started a lot earlier than I did.
right, so the technique is going to be pretty easy. We're just, we're just notching this out. Almost make it look like a paintbrush when you first start out. Make it look like a paintbrush. And we'll round that down. And um, we're going to round the stick down. And try to try to leave some on there to handle it for a while, just gradually. If you notice my carvings, I flip around a lot with my carving. Um, I think I think a lot of carvers do do that because you're always flipping your carving around, carving in different spots, you know, to say, well, I'm going to stick here and work on the hat or work on the, work on the head or work on the body. But you always find yourself flipping it around and then you see something or you're looking at it and you got to fix that edge or round that a little more. So it's really, you know, in your best interest to jump around when you carve something. I think that's one of the ways to make it to make it uniform to what you're trying to achieve. And you'll notice too I'm starting to already put a little curve with that up sweep cut that I showed you earlier with the ghost I'm trying to get a little bit of a crooked looking broom going and I won't take it all the way down yet because then there's a chance I might break it off so I'll wait till the end to being done and I'll just gradually keep taking it down as I go around it all right take the corners off on the broom part you can even leave a little up sweep right here at the top to make it flare out a little bit all these little things are just things I've learned from my carving teachers and uh, I try to share them with you as we move along our journey together. But please subscribe if you haven't. I want to try to help build the community that I enjoy so much especially right now with all the crazy stuff going on kind of need things in our lives to take our mind off of it and really there's not too much more of a relaxing thing than taking a piece of wood and just chiseling away on it it's just a lot of fun I think a lot of times when you start carving, you're so worried about getting something that looks good. And whatever, it's like anything else, like if you're building a house or doing some construction or something like that, you're always going to have a little mess. You're always going to have a little mess before you, before you get it to where it's looking good for you. So don't worry if you're carving looks like a little mess because as you move along with it get closer and closer to finishing it that final piece up it starts all coming together all right so going around kind of around this little wedge up that I found just keep working around it and I'll speed this up because I started using Adobe Premiere for the videos 
and I have, haven't had a lot of experience with using Adobe. I do use Photoshop a lot in my job and Illustrator, but I haven't had much experience with Premiere. So since I have the, uh, the creative package, gives me all the video or all the uh, Adobe products. I started divulging into Premiere, and I didn't know how to do a lot of things and speeding up a video. was one of the things I didn't know how to do very well. So I did a couple play playing around with a couple clips and figured it out. And that'll help me cut down the length of time of the videos when I'm just sitting here removing wood. I'm a little faster. So here we go. Okay, so we're about ready to put the put the little uh, tie in here for the broom. Tie the broom hairs, broom straws on there. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take and draw a line where we want the center to be. All right, so we got a little line drawn around there and doesn't have to be perfect all right so what we're going to do is we're going to come to the outside of that line all right and we're going to make a little stop cut right there if you want to draw two lines draw two lines Meaning if you want to put another line right here, this will be the center point. So if I want to put another line on here, go ahead and put another line. Give you something to go around. One at the top, one at the bottom. Just a guide to follow so you don't get too close. Because what we're going to do is we're just going to stop cut all the way around that thing with little stop cuts. Both sides. This is where if you got a detail knife. Be 
you. Sometimes, too, you'll find that, you know, if I only want this to be a certain width, I always kind of start out a little bigger and then bring it down to what I want. Um, I'll show you what I mean in a second. As you can see, this is a little narrow. And over here, I've got it kind of wide where I drew my lines. But that's okay because I'm, once I get all my stop cuts in, see how I turn the wood around because I want to get my stop cuts coming up into the string. Like so, if you can kind of see that. It'll get more detailed in just a second. But... Make your stop cut up. And that's going to make it stand out. These are just simple techniques that, like I, I know, experienced carvers already know all this, but it took a teacher bring it to my attention especially about starting out you know a little wider because you're always going to bring that down and you're going to round it a little bit and you're probably going to need to take a little bit off here and there just to make it make it stand out Gives you the illusion that it's bigger than it really is. So, if you can see, I kind of start out big with that. Now, I'm going to just go around it and shave it down into it. And by the time I get done going all the way around, it's going to be smaller, it'll look more uniform to what it should be.
where that curved blade on the lion's knife comes in. That little curved blade works great for this kind of little stuff. Like rounding, rounding those hard edges off and getting down in there. And when I'm working around a piece to make my stop cut, I can kind of roll it. That helps out. Um, I really like this lion's knife that I, and I got this at a carving. And I got this at a carving show when I was up in, up in Miami Valley. I think it is Miami Valley Carvers. And uh, I've just loved this knife ever since I bought it. It's really sharp, easy to keep sharp. Even my carving teacher, when he comes around and is kind of helping us out, he'll, he'll usually use our knives. And he always takes that, gets my lion's knife, and he's like, man, I really like that knife. That's a good knife. Coming from a man with probably 200 knives in his toolkit. All right, so I'm still working on getting this down, getting this smoothed out a little bit, cutting that straw tie in there. So I want my bottom to flare out too a little bit. So, as you can see on this one, it's kind of rounded right here from the tie out. Um, so we'll do that. And then we'll get the rest of the broomstick down. And um, that'll be it. Alright. So, like I said, I got this a little rounded at the bottom. So I'm just going to go around here and take these tips off on the bottom. On all these pieces, I've left the bottoms completely flat just for mounting purposes because um, I'm probably going to glue them. Well, I am going to glue them on. I have glued the other ones on. But uh, I leave a little bit of a flat spot there just so it's got something to attach the glue to. All right, so I'm taking that down a little bit, leaving a little bit of a hump. So I want it to go to one side. You know, I can make it a little fatter over here, a little smaller over here. Um, there again, it's your broom. Do with it what you want. What looks good to you looks good to me and everybody else. You can make the, make the string even smaller than that if you want. You could probably do um, a little thinner up here at the top, even. But be careful, that's going to chip away, so you don't want to be whacking away too hard at it. It's really going to stand out anyway once we get the broom handle down to size. So that's what we're going to do right now. Let's see, let me take this a little more, a little more around. Just to get that little bit of a flat spot off of there. All right. And now I'll get my broomstick down to size. And what's cool about this is it doesn't have to be perfect. Just make it look like an old branch. With a couple crooks in it if you want. I think with this video I've kind of emphasized the swooping cut with your knife. 
use that. I would get it looking like an old crooked broom. Just be careful and don't cut all the way through. Once you get down small, it gets easy to cut too hard and break it, either break it off or cut right on through the other side. And if you mess it up, you might find another wedge out in your scrap box. I'm pretty sure I could go out there and find a couple more wedges. Like I said, I did three of these. I've done three of these little graveyard scenes. And on the second one I did... This will be the third one. On the second one I did, I forgot to, I put it all together for the girl and I forgot to, I forgot the broom on that one. Cause I got all in a hurry to get it done for her and get the video done. I, want, I figured I could get a better video if I did, a couple, did them a couple times. Okay, so we want to get this down. We want to get this down to a to a comparable broomstick here. We're almost done with this, and I think we'll start on the witch. Get the witch and the cauldron, and we can start painting and putting it together. So, like I said, be careful now that you're getting down there that you don't start cutting through it. I'm going to put some details on the broom and uh, touch up a few things and we'll have her looking good. really start putting in our fine crooks and crannies here. This one spot right here is really tender. Okay, see how we're crooking in right here a little bit? We're coming in a little bit right there. So, what we're gonna do is take that little crook right there
and then we're gonna it's curved in I don't know how you can tell on the camera it's curved in that way the other one at the top we're gonna make it go the opposite direction so we're just gonna come down a little bit here Give it a little crook the other way. And that's the top. Put a little bit of a sweep at the top. Okay. A lot of times if you can picture it in your head, you can create it on your wood. Okay, so we're going to call that done. Now we're going to get our little flex cut V tool. Like I said, if you haven't got these, this is a good little set. Four, four tools, little micro Vs. I think there's got three V's and a, and a little U in it. Um, but I love these for detail. Some people like, like I said, they like the Dockards. I'm a little partial to these. I used some Dockards at my carving class. A couple guys sitting next to me usually has a set of Dockards, so he let me play with them one night. And I do like them. They got some really fine points on them and some different curvatures. But I'm kind of partial to these Flex Tools brand. And not that I'm endorsed by Flex Tool or have any kind of sponsorship or anything. For one, like I said, they're available at my Woodcraft store, which makes it a plus. Because I can get Flex Cut tools there. But. I really just like the way they feel. I get a little more of a grip in my hand here, and I can use my thumb right here with my finger underneath. I can really control my detailing because I can go as deep as I want. And with the flex, they, they come out. So when you're going in, and they flex a little bit, it makes them pop out when you're going up. So we're just putting the straw in right now. And all the way around here, I want a kind of a pattern going all the way up into where the broom tie is. Okay, if you can see that or not. I've also got a little deeper one right here. It kind of gives it a little, little curved in look. Okay, so there's the there's the broom straws. Now we want to give them up here. I'm trying to keep this in the camera for you, for you so you can see. But we're going to make these go up at, at a little bit of a slight angle. And the couple going up straight up. So just kind of mix it up. Whenever you're detailing, adding texture it's always kind of good to just randomly pop around first and then come back and get any spots that look like they need a little more grooved in okay but 
looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. Okay, flare it out how, higher than my tie, and then comes back in around the tie, and then back out. So that's what you want. So, all right, Let's see how it compares. That's much better compared to what I had before with this little guy right here. Alright, it'll look really cool once it's painted. Alright. So, just a quick review of what we got done. We got the ghosts, we got the mummy, we got the three tombstones, and the fresh grave, we got the broom, and we got our two bats. Alright, so, we're almost there, guys. And we'll be able to put this thing together and give it to the wife or the girlfriend or, or whatever. So, alright, we're going to take a little break, and uh, we'll be right back to start the witch and the cauldron.